did a, a sketch session doing sketches like this, and in the comments, somebody asked if I could do a, um, a shading basics video. So I thought it'd be good to go live and just kind of talk about some basic ideas around shading kind of as I've learned them basically and pass them on to you kind of the the at the simplest level so that hopefully y'all can implement them if you're just kind of starting out with this um I'm gonna go through this this diagram step by step but basically this is the 101 level you know thinking about a light source um an object and the environment around it and then trying to replicate that or should I say represent it actually not replicate it in as simplest form as possible but in reality I think I can give you a bunch of tips but the the best thing I can recommend for you to do is to just study objects you know like here's a little G drive here and you can see I have a, a light source kind of in the upper left and just you know grab objects and really study them, study how the light hits them and how single, typically, you know, at best to kind of think about it with a single light source and just really see how kind of the light plays across it and creates gradients, you know, with this, with this drive, right? There's a slight uh, round here at the edges and you can see how the light picks that up. You can see the way the light runs across this radius, the way you get little highlights where the parts come together. Um, so, you know, whatever objects you have around you, just, just study them. You know, here's a little concrete, little architectural thing. This is a great, a great way to study light with this single light source from the upper left. You know, notice how, right, we're getting like super bright areas where the light's coming from slightly more shadowed areas, the way the light is creating these kind of cast shadows. But let's talk a little bit about how we can do that in a simple sketch. So I'm gonna start with some basic shapes and we'll build to something more complex from there, okay? So let's start with something as simple as a cube. We're not gonna be focusing too much on the quality of drawing in this video, if the, the line work itself. I just really wanna show you the basics of shading. So again, thinking about, we have that light coming from the upper left. That's kind of a pretty pretty constant light direction I like to use. You can get fancier the, the more, more you progress, but you know, I always think of like, the purpose of my drawing is to, to show a client or a colleague my idea not to show them how well I could draw. And so I wanna show them things in a simple, um, a simple way. So here's our light source in the upper left. Pretend that's some kind of a, a lamp. And here's our, our cube, right? Well, going back to our little example object and thinking about how the light is bouncing off of it, right? Well, the light's coming from the upper left, this top surface, is gonna be the brightest. That's the most, uh, the light is hitting that the most. This surface to the, the left but facing us, gonna be in a little bit of a shadow, just a little bit. So here I'm taking a 20% gray marker and I'm just kind of hitting that, that edge there. Now this surface to the lower right that's gonna be the most in shadow from what we can see. You know, technically the bottom <laughs> would be the most in shadow. We can't see the bottom. Uh, this, this edge right here would be very dark. We can't really see that edge. Um, but this surface would be in shadow. So here you see, I'm, I'm really filling that in because that's a nice solid shadow surface. But what about the cast shadow, right? Well, if this light, let's, let's pretend this light was, was big, really big, like as big as the sun, and it's coming down like this, we're gonna get these projected lines. So think of again, this light, all this light 
coming down and hitting our object, right? So imagine that light hitting this corner, hitting this corner, and hitting this corner. And then it's gonna draw out this way. So depending on how big this light source is and how high up it is, we're gonna get a cast shadow, something like that. And the cast shadows is typically gonna be, it's gonna be darkest, closest to the object. I'm just gonna come in and also just give a little bit of a darker line to separate our object here. So that's it basically on a cube. Let's go, let's go one level more complex. Let's go with a cylinder. So we have our cylinder. It's gonna react very similar to the cube, right? So this top surface is gonna be in the most light, right? So I'm just gonna let that be paper. And then as this surface, the cylindrical surface wraps around, it's gonna get progressively darker. So again, I'm gonna think about this in the top view for a second here. We have our, our light source. We have our cylinder, right? So this is gonna be the brightest and then it's gonna get darker, 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 darker until we get right here, it's gonna be the darkest. And then around the other side, it's gonna do the opposite. So again, starting with my 20% gray here. Just getting that 20% that in. Maybe we'd see just a little bit of the shadow from the other side here, over here. But right here, just like here, this is gonna be pretty bright. Now I'm gonna grab a 30% gray. You can always make a sketch darker, you can't make it lighter. So I start with a 20%, just kind of work up from there. so you can read it a little better in the video. And then the same with the cast shadow, right? So we're gonna draw that, that shadow out this way because the light is coming this way. And then thinking of how that light is gonna hit this edge, well, this, this end of the shadow is gonna be rounded. So we have a straight-sided object, like this cube, right? And something like a, a pyramid, let's say, is gonna behave a lot like the cube. Right, I'm sure you could pretty easily predict how the pyramid would behave based on how that behaved. But let's do something, what about a, what about a, a sphere? Well, that sphere, the light is gonna bend all around it. You know, kind of like how we showed how the light is gonna work around the cylinder here. The highlight is gonna be, again, in the upper left. So that's gonna be, the, the brightest part is gonna be here. And then it's gonna get progressively darker. And then we're gonna get a cast shadow underneath it. It's gonna eke out a little bit here because all this is, you know, that light it's gonna be coming down. So what's that look like? 
I'm gonna get my 20% again. Look something like that. You know, wouldn't this? This is. Let's say it's. It's very. If it's a matte material, you know, it's going to remain pretty dark all through here, through this bottom area. Right. But if we were gonna get fancier, let's say this was a little bit shiny, well, that light is gonna come down and it's gonna bounce back a little bit and hit the underside of this sphere. So the darkest part of the sphere is gonna be more around the hemisphere here. bit. Right, because we're going to end up getting a little bit of reflected light right down here. Like if you think of like if this ball was, was chrome, that would be a, a reflection down there. It's making sense so far. If you have any questions as I go, let me know down in the chat. Basically, you know, most shading for industrial design is, is, is somewhat of a, a mixture of these things. You know, it's just basically, basically combining a cylinder, a cube, and a sphere to get kind of the results that you want. Um, Again, we wanted to get, if we wanted to get one step even a little bit trickier, let's pretend these objects are outside, right? And there's a, there's a blue sky. Let's say there's a blue sky outside. Well, all of the surfaces that are facing upward are gonna get a slight little bit of a blue tint especially if it's a if it's a shiny object right like this this sphere that we said is is shiny or if the cylinder was shiny let's make that cylinder even more glossy we get the same thing going on with the the reflected light and same with our, our cube would get a little bit of a reflected light in the top Let's say if our ground was slightly warm toned, we could add a little bit of a, a warm tone in the downward facing surfaces like in this cylinder, right? Depends on, on how, uh, depends on, on how glossy it is. Lars asked in the chat if I'll be posting this live as a video afterwards. Yes, definitely will be. So let's see how that, that affects a more complicated object using the, basically the principles that I showed here. Let's say we had like a, a very basic shoe, just a side view of a shoe. Won't do anything too fancy here. It's kind of like an old school like a Chuck Taylor or something like that. Well, believe it or not, even something that's kind of as organic as a shoe is basically still just going to be some combination of, of those things that I just showed you. So this, this band area down here, for example, that, the outsole, well, that's basically kind of an elongated cylinder, right? If I was to just draw this band, it 
it's something like that, right? And again, the light is coming from the upper left. So the highlight is gonna be here, and then it's gonna get darker and darker as we wrap around as it gets into the shadow. So I'm gonna do that same exact thing as we did on our cylinder on this part. little bit of a shadow there for that part. Now what about this part, the part that wraps around the shoe? That's, that's really complex, right? Well, again, if you break it down, this, this upper part, this, or this part by the toe, kind of a cylinder that tapers into a sphere, right? So you're getting kind of a sphere here, and it comes back into this cylinder, and then there's basically another sphere over here, right, that comes up. And then if it was a high top, you'd basically have another cylinder here, right? So it's, again, just a, a non-geometric combination of these things where you'd have the shadow here and here, right? Like, it would be like this. So that's what I'm going to replicate down here in a, a slightly smoother way. So we have the cylinder that's coming down from the ankle, the sphere of the heel, and that cylinder through the main body of it, and then another sphere at the toe. And then again, thinking about how we did all of our little cast shadows, right? So let's say this part is a little bit raised so that's going to cast a shadow. This part is raised, that's going to cast a shadow. Right? All of our laces are going to cast a shadow. And that's it. I mean, the rest is, is kind of detailing, right? I mean, we can, we can detail this thing as much as we want to. Let's say this was like a piece of textile here. But it's all basically, you know, variations of that cube, cylinder, and sphere stretched out into appropriate kind of dimensions. So let's do let's do a different kind of an object. Let's do something like maybe a little bit more, a little simpler than a shoe, a little bit less organic, like this, um, like this shaver that I had done, right? Well, I did this in a, a previous video on just sketching with sharpies, but I didn't explain kind of the principles behind the shading here. So let's trace this up real quick. Ah, there we go. I'm gonna put this underneath. So, you know, the, the basic shape of this thing is a rectangle, right? So we know it's going to behave pretty similar to the way our cube behaved with light, right? But there's some things going on, right? There's this, this top is fully radiused, right? So that's basically, you know, a cylinder that's attached to our rectangle. We've got another radius surface at the base here. And then this is chamfering back or angling back in space. Coming up into a part line here. And 
then I'm showing there's, what did I do here? Let me look. Then I'm showing there's a part line here. Just off the face, right? So that face changes, but there's a part line. And then, yeah, we've got another part line here for the, the foil for the, the shaver. And then there's a, another part line here for the UI. And then this, this on off switch slides. Things are kind of coming out. So even though this is a, a simple object, there's, there's a, quite a bit going on. So one of the things I like to do to kind of help myself when I'm doing an object like this is I'll draw a center line. The center line is, you know, if I if I slice this thing right in down the center, it's basically what's going on there. This comes out like that, it goes back in. A little jog for that part line, that's flat, and then that goes back in space. So again, thinking about you know our cylinder, our square, our cube, and our sphere. Don't really have spheres here, but plenty of cylinders and cubes, some pyramidal type shapes. So I'm gonna get back to my 20%. This this surface, again, the light, the light is coming from the upper left. This surface is basically gonna be the most in shadow. Um, pull the sketch out from underneath. Now, I didn't quite do that in this sketch because I'm showing some reflected light here, but to keep it a little simpler, let's make this area the most in shadow. It's, it's the most kind of downward facing. white here because that is radiusing over, right? So that's gonna be kind of facing the light a little bit more. So I don't want that to be as dark. Okay, and then I'm gonna let this radius just be paper because thinking a little bit of some reflected light, you could make it very dark, but I think it just won't read as well. And then this surface is gonna be pretty dark as well. Because again, this is facing away from the light. And you know, like, I think of when I do stuff like this, it's a little bit like painting with watercolors, you know, I'm letting, I'm using the marker really quickly so that I get these kind of dry spots. It just gives me a little bit of a natural gradient. Cause you don't want to fill it. At least for me, I don't, I don't want to fill it perfectly, right? Like I don't, I personally don't like it when you see sketches and it's just like, you could see they're just like filling it like this. I like to see it to be a little bit more kind of, just a little more artistic. Uh, and thinking of our, our switch here, again, this is gonna be kind of downward facing.
right? And with this surface of that switch, again, is, is right facing. So that's gonna be nice and in shadow. And here it's gonna all be kind of, the light is gonna be hitting it. And then we've got this bit of a step in here for the UI. So that's gonna be in shadow. And then a little bit of where this part comes together, that's rolling over, that's in shadow. And then we've got a lot of upward facing surfaces. So we can, we can do that trick again where the, the upward facing surfaces are a little bit hitting that, that sky tone. bit of shadow on this back side as it's rolling over. Just a little bit. Then I'm gonna pump up my contrast just a little with this 70%. Just a little though. Doesn't need too much. Want that to, to read a little bit better. Hit this surface a little bit with the 20%. That's pretty much it. You know, I, I had some some small little details on here. So let's say like let's say there's a logo here. Whatever that logo is. And then you have these little grip texture details. Those, these little dimples, right? They could be defined as in or out, depending on how you, you shade them. I don't even, I don't even think I'm gonna shade them. I don't think they're, they're big enough to be shaded. But let's say they were, let's say they were bigger and they were going inward. Right, well, I, I would shade that as kind of like the inverse of our, of our sphere, right? It's just the sphere, but inverted. those would be shaded something like that and then we had this which was kind of this this foil uh, razor head which I'm just gonna indicate with some dots and then for whatever reason sometimes I like to draw things like they're they're hovering a little bit so I I had this kind of slight cast shadow here so we can emulate that over here as well. That making sense so far? So again, it's just really just like it's studying and thinking about that cube, that cylinder, that sphere, and, and how it kind of interacts with things, right? So we had our light source coming from the upper left. This is essentially a rectangle, an elongated cube with a cylinder running along the top. And then we kind of a, you know, a angled back surface here. And then this is a surface that's kind of, if I was to look at the, the side view of this surface, right? Let's do the side view of the whole thing actually, because it'll be helpful. We have the side view of this thing. It's kind of coming to a point here. It's probably gonna round a little bit, it's probably not gonna be a, a razor point. It's coming up, that's our rectangle. We have our cylinder at the top. 
part line down the center. But this little thing, the switch, it's basically two inverted cylinders, right? If I was to, to magnify this, it's like this, right? So these are inverted cylinder shapes. So in thinking about how that light is gonna be hitting it, well, this is gonna be the most shadow, right? And then it's gonna get brighter, 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 brighter. This is gonna be the most bright, and then it's gonna get a little bit darker, darker, darker as it runs up, just a little bit. Eventually, you do this so much, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, probably, you know, been doing this professionally for 23, but I've been doing marker rendering since I was like 13 years old, so 35 years. You do this so much that you don't even think about it anymore. It just kind of becomes second nature. Um, like any language, I mean, this is, this is a language. Um, you know, if, if you're learning to speak a new language, whether you're, you're learning to speak English or French or Mandarin or Japanese, you know, at first it's very difficult, right? You have to think about, um, you have to be thinking about each word as you're, you're selecting it. But eventually you're, you become so accustomed to, to speaking a language, you, you, the, you know the words by heart and um, it just becomes second nature. You don't think about it anymore. And you can start to, you can start to do things that are a little bit fancier that you don't even think about, like use slang. I'm using a little slang right now. They say when you're when you're learning a language, learning slang and humor, those are the, the hardest things to learn. Kind of the same with, with drawing. You know, all the little artistic things that make you really want to look at a sketch. It just comes with, with time, with practice with learning your own style, studying other people's style, right? That's all slang is. You hear somebody use a word you hadn't heard before or to use differently, right? It's how like words like cool and hot come to mean different things. Well, it's the same with, with sketching. And right now I'm using some really dark, darks to make this a little chromey. Also just to make it interesting. It makes the sketch read a lot better. This makes it a little more interesting. Right. And you can see how even just with this, with just, just with a Sharpie and white pencil, I was able to get a lot of visual interest just by using contrast, by using color, uh, or not color, but <laughs> value basically, right? By making these areas black. And here I'm, I'm doing that in a different way. It's all one color but I'm still adding in a lot of contrast. All right, what else should we do? Let's see how long we've been doing it. Maybe we should do, we could do one more. We'll get a clean sheet here. Let's do, let's do another somewhat simple object. Let's do a, let's do a speaker. So let's say like a, a traditional kind of a bookshelf audio speaker, right? Well, again, thinking back to our, our basic shapes that we drew here, well, the, the basic shape of this speaker is gonna be basically an elongated cube, right? It's a rectangle. Right, and we might articulate that cube a little bit, right, by adding some, some radiuses here in this dimension or in this axis. Right, so the, what, did, what do we basically have here? Well, that's just a, a section of a cylinder, right? So we have our, our 
cube shape that's elongated, cylinder, 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 cylinder. I'm gonna articulate part line off the front of this. And then we're gonna get our, let's have some exposed drivers. The drivers are the things on a, on a speaker that make the sound. What is this, right? This is basically an inverted cylinder. No, I'm sorry, inverted sphere. And we're gonna have a tweeter here. Right, that's going in. And then this is another section of a sphere. Maybe there's some, some detailing on the front face here. A little bit of a logo. You know, maybe this is wood grain. What's gonna happen with that wood grain is gonna wrap around. It's gonna wrap around this way. Lars asked if I could do something with glass. I'm not gonna do glass today. This is just basic shading. Glass is not basic. And then again, thinking of this, this cube, we have our cast shadow, right? It's gonna come off this way. So let's again add some shading to that, right? So just, just like our, our cube, this surface is gonna be the darkest, this surface is gonna be a little lighter, this is gonna be the lightest. So getting that, that right side, again, our, our light coming from the upper left cylinder section here, cylinder section here. This is gonna be bright. That cylinder's wrapping around the other side a little bit here. Uh, let's see. This surface is gonna be, you know, the light is hitting here the most. It's hitting here pretty a lot as well. So I'm just gonna get a little bit on that surface, not a whole lot. But this is our, our inverted sphere here. This is another sphere section for the tweeter. So that's this one's going in, this one's coming out. There's a little bit of a chamfer around this tweeter. And then this is, there's usually a, a gasket around this driver. So this is a little bit of like a, a cylinder going around a circle. Right, and we could start pumping up that contrast a little bit more. Going in with it 50%. So I want this right side to be the darkest. Now, Right now, I'm just doing this in grayscale because I want this to be simple and easy to understand. But if I was to do this in color, the principles are the same, right? So like, let's say if I was gonna do this in, in wood tones, right? Well, like, well, I would just do this, but with browns instead of with grays. A little bit of a part line here. This is maybe a groove. Right, and then we've got our shadow. And again, we can start to, to pump that up a little bit more and get to 70% here. I 
gonna show, even though this is, I'm not doing it in color, but it's wood grain. That's gonna have, there's always a little bit of a dimension to that. So you can see how much, you know, I'm adding contrast and that's gonna really make the sketch just come off the page a little bit more, as we like to say. So that is pretty much how I do it. You know, <laughs> and whether it's something simple, um, like the speaker, which is basically a, a cube form, or, you know, I showed you how I did it on this, this razor type object. Again, kind of a, a cube with a, a cylinder at the top, some inverted cylinders. And even something as, as you know, complex as a sneaker, right? It's very organic. Uh, it's still kind of basically a bunch of cylinders that come together. Um, and it's still gonna use these, these basic principles of, of understanding where the light comes from. But I can't emphasize enough, you know, it's great, it's great to watch videos like this. It's great to understand how people do it. I can't emphasize enough just how important it is to, to set up a light like I have here in the upper left and just really kind of study things. Just, just look at things that are around you and spin them around, right? Like it's even something as complex as, as this mouse. It's still behaving by all those same rules. I mean, this is, this is a very organic form, but you can see it's still, still kind of a collection of like tapering cylinders and, and squares, um, even though it's, it's fairly, fairly complex. something like like this pen right and you can really see how you know the light is creating we'll get a silver one how the light is is creating highlights right that one directional light you're getting this hot highlight in these shadows and even like in these in this black part all these little grooves and how that plays with it how that how the, the light plays over this little logo badge so just, just study the objects around you. They're gonna teach you, you know, more than I ever could um, and start playing with different temperatures of light or um, it's, it's much better to do kind of in a, in a controlled environment, you know, like, your, like your, your room, you set it up on your desk versus outside. There might be a lot of different kind of reflected light sources going on, but here in my studio, it's, it's fairly, it's fairly dim um, other than this one light and I could really see how it, it plays across objects. So I hope this uh, video was, was helpful uh, to the person that requested it. Thank you for requesting it. Great topic to do a video on. If you wanna see more stuff like this, you know what to do. You hit like, you hit subscribe, maybe you share it with a friend. Um, uh, until next time, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Hope you get some sketching done. Hope you get some, some design done. And I always also like to remember that the reason that I learned how to draw like this is not to show off my drawing skills. The reason why I learned how to draw like this is to communicate ideas. So um, for me, it's about you know working with other people, working with marketing people, engineers, uh, other colleagues, and showing them um, how to, showing them what my ideas are and hopefully building ideas collaboratively. Alrighty, but I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your day.